Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner. In this episode, well, I think it's time to discuss the difference between I++ and I++I. This episode of C++ Weekly is sponsored by me. Be sure to check out the video description for important links about upcoming events, sponsoring the channel with Patreon, buying e copies of my best practices and puzzler books, and how to contact me if you are interested in on-site training or remote code reviews. Now, I see these two constructs used interchangeably, but they actually have quite different semantics, and I think it's important to understand the difference in the semantics between them as well as understand any difference in your code generation plausibly from using them. So let's just go ahead and look at this example where I have an int i equals zero and I am returning i plus plus and I get that the program returned zero. So I had i, and I incremented it, but I got zero back. Why did I get zero back? Let's go ahead and swap these pluses over to the other side, and we'll see that the program now returns one. So let's go ahead and dig into this. First of all, this construct, plus plus i, is known as pre-increment. And... This construct is known as post increment. And they actually have kind of goofy ways of defining them if you are implementing your own pre increment and post increment operator overloads for your own user defined type. And let's go ahead and make a very simple wrapper around an int. Now let's go ahead and define our own operator plus plus. Now this currently has a compile error because we need to discuss which operator we are defining and what that means. We are defining in this case the pre-increment operator. This is the plus plus i version. And pre-increment returns itself back. So we're actually returning a reference to an object of type myInt. And this really should be constexpr. Implementing this is pretty straightforward. We just pre-increment our value and then return back a reference to ourselves. So now if we have an object of type myInt, and let's go ahead and initialize it with one, shall we say, if I call this pre-increment, I have just now incremented my internal value. And if I were to return my now confusingly named value dot value, I should see that yes, I get two returned. Let's go ahead and comment this out. Because I have incremented the value from one to two. Pretty straightforward. Now, if I wanted to call post increment, this isn't going to compile because I haven't defined a post increment. Now, the compiler actually gives us a clue. Earlier compilers, this would have been much harder to figure out. To implement the post increment, it looks like this. Now, this dummy int here. That thing int it has no meaning. It exists simply as a way to distinguish between pre-increment and post-increment. So now I want to call val++. No, 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 that's not right. Um, this doesn't do what it should. So note I'm returning a copy here. This is actually quite intentional. Now this compiles because the compiler doesn't know the semantics of what we're trying to do. It just lets us do whatever we want to do inside this. A proper post increment needs to do this. 
First of all, we need to make a copy of our current state. Then we need to increment our current state. And then we need to return that copy, the previous state. And this is where things are weird. So a pre-increment says increment the value and return the new value to me. Post increment says increment and return the previous value. That's not generally what we mean. How often in our code do we actually mean, oh, excuse me, I would like the previous value here. No, we never want that. We almost always, I say never, someone's going to correct me. We almost never mean give me the previous value. There are certainly use cases for that. But when you see something like something like this, I would argue that this is this is nonsensical. On each loop iteration, we're saying, please increment i and then return the previous value back to me. In some cases, this is actually expensive to do. And we can show where in a couple of places here. What we almost always mean is simply increment i, I don't care what you do with that return value. This copy that has to occur of the previous state has got to have some impact somewhere, right? So let's go ahead and just take a quick look at where that might have some impact. And I've tried to come up with some examples for how we can really look at just the impact between pre-increment and post-increment. And I think I have some ideas, so let's go ahead and see how this looks. I'm not using a template here like I normally would for code like this because we want to see the actual full generated code here. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get rid of this body of main because I don't want that getting in the way. And we are going to shut down this output so we can look at just the assembly that has been generated. So I'm doing a simple loop from begin to end of these two map iterators that were passed in. Start with a result of zero. And for each element in here, I just want to add the value, not the key. I'm going for just the value. So I'm getting the second element here. That's an iterator. I need to do that. And then I need to return result. Now, this code isn't doing anything here because it becomes an infinite loop because I forgot to increment my begin iterator. I'm going to start by doing a pre-increment and we'll see what this code looks like. Okay. This is 26 lines of assembly and we can see that it is calling this tree increment function. And this is with pre-increment. Now, if I make it a post increment and we have to keep in mind that now we're having to copy this iterator, we see exactly the same code generated. And this is because we have optimizations turned on. And generally speaking, the difference between pre-increment and post-increment from a performance standpoint is going to be meaningless when we are in an optimized build. Let's just go ahead and disable the optimizer for a moment. Okay, so it is a very subtle difference here with this code. We went from 95 lines of assembly with an optimized build disabled with pre-increment to 100 lines of assembly if we do a post increment. It's a really small thing because generally speaking, our iterators are very cheap to copy. So it only has to keep track of just a tiny little detail that it is then returning back to us a copy of it. And that's a good thing. We want our iterators to be cheap to copy. But there is a difference. 
So I'm going to now show you some code that I had created earlier that tries to show just the difference between pre-increment and post-increment. So we have a function that returns a const iterator to us for a map from int to int. I have this side-by-side -side comparison diff viewer feature that Compiler Explorer supports, and I am building both with optimization disabled, and I am using Clang, trunk, C++ 20 mode. I have pre-increment and post-increment. The left side is the post-increment, that is the one that should be generating more code, and the right side is the dash d pre-increment here. So again, we're seeing a difference of only six instructions. It is not going to have a huge impact on your code even in a debug build. Although it might be the kind of thing that if you have many templates stamping out code, that you would end up seeing a large impact. The thing that I really want you to focus on though, is the fact that if we do a pre-increment, we increment and we return the new result. If we do a post-increment, we increment and return the previous result. If I'm reading code, I++ raises my eyebrows. Why do we need this previous value? And this should be, generally speaking, if we see plus plus I, we know we're incrementing a value and we're using that new value. If we're doing I++, then we're asking why. This is my take on this. I'm certain there will be people who disagree with me in the comment section of this video. But I think I've made my argument for one being, generally speaking, the one that you want, the other one being unnecessary complexity and unnecessary cognitive overhead while we're reading the code. So again, thank you for watching this episode of C++ Weekly. I hope you got something out of it and come back for the next episode.